here. Welcome back to the Fired Up with CJ show. We've been talking to Dr. Jo Joseph Cardella, and we we're talking about his book, 12 Rules of Attention, How to Avoid Screw-Ups, Free Up Headspace, Do More, and Be More at Work. Now, I love this. Um, in one of your habits, um, you talked about um, different types of blindness and different types <laughs> of things your brain yeah. <laughs> does to you. Um, so it was um, and so it was change by blindness, um, inattention blinders or blindness, um, the miser brain and priming. So let's just address these one by one. Um, what is change blindness and why is it important to know about? Well, one of the things, one of the things that, you know, sometimes kind of, you know, we were talking about detail that slips by us. And because it happens, we're either overwhelmed with detail, so we, we just don't see it at all, um, or there, there is detail that we are responding to that we may not have even been paying attention to it. Our mind is, is responding to it in a millisecond, and we're not actually paying attention to it ourselves, yet it is responsible uh, for, our, for our behavior. Um, so ch change blindness is, is one of these things. If you ever, <laughs> I like to come up with like the, 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 the simplest of possible examples. Have you ever, have you ever like um, driven, uh, well, because I, you know, as I said before, we live in the Berkshire, so we're, we're out in a rural area. And so we, you know, we have this expression out here, I'm driving into town. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, so. If I'm driving into town every once in a while, I, you know, I'll notice, oh my God, there's a whole building there. Yes. <laughs> I've done that too. Where did that now, come from? Has that been there all from? the time? Yeah. Yeah. Has that been there the whole time? And I, I you don't even realize it. It's just suddenly there. But yet you've driven by it every day. Thousand in my times. case, yeah. You know, and, and there it is. You know, and and isn't it that way too with interpersonal relationships? Isn't mm -hmm. it that way too, even with reading a book? You know, you read a book a second time or a third time, you go, oh my gosh, there's that fantastic detail. You know, well, how did I miss it? It's the same thing. I mean, if we can miss a whole building, just think of some of the smaller things that we can miss, you know, a little innuendo in somebody's eyes, uh, mm. you, know, you know, a little innuendo in their voice, their body language, you know, or um, anything like that, really. So it's, it's, so it comes down to work when, um, and, and it's so funny because um, I'll hear people um, saying things like, I totally agree with you. <laughs> and so their body language is saying no, and their verbals <laughs> are saying yes. I actually yeah. had this one meeting where the woman the entire time had yeah. her finger up like this. And I thought, oh, she's giving me the finger the <laughs> entire time. This is awful. Uh, okay, so, so how, does this, how does this change blindness? Like, how does this work in, with respect to relationships at work? Because I see that happening oftentimes. Well, it works eating. with us, too. It works yeah. with us, too. I mean, you know, you know, we look in the mirror every day and we just, you know, we, we feel that all of a sudden we look in the mirror, you know, it's just like that building, you know, yeah. all of a sudden we look in the mirror and we say, oh my goodness. I'm know? old. <laughs> That's what you know? I say. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I, you know, yeah. these are, these are the simple examples, but then things are starting to change within us too. And, you know, mm -hmm. one of the, one of the reasons I wrote, um, I wrote the 12 rules um, is because, uh, you know, one of the a statistic caught my, my attention that, that I think it was somewhere around $650 billion is lost each year to worker error. And mm. that, that got me thinking about attention again, because I, you know, I, I wrote mm. about it. I wrote about it over almost two decades ago as well. Mm -hmm. I, I did a big mm -hmm. research on attention then. Um, but this time, you know, I looked at it and I said, there's another statistic that's bothering me even more than the $650 billion loss by businesses and corporations a year uh, due to worker error. And that is that about 82%, not about 82% of workers feel that their most important talents 
are not recognized um. at the workforce. And mm -hmm. so all this really has to do with us internally. Mm -hmm. And number one, the changes that we go through and they're not being recognized, but also the changes that we go through that we're not recognizing either. Mm. So, so although change blindness is, you know, we have this external thing like, oh, there's that building I haven't noticed in six months. You mm. know, what about, what about us? What about us internally? Mm. What's going on with us in the last six months that, that, that I'm missing mm. and that I need to maybe put my attention on in order to either develop it or maybe, maybe, you know, delete it. Right. So it's self going back to awareness, like how, how do we or how are we aware of our own personal changes that are happening? And how can we make time to put attention to even just noticing because those things are rewarding, or depressing, <laughs> depending yeah, on what you I, find there, there are, there are millions of transactions, so to speak, at attentional transactions going on in our heads per second. And we can really zero in on about 40. Right. At the, at the most. Right. This is the, inattention blindness. Is that right? Um, uh, yeah, it can be. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and we, we can only zero in on about 40, 40 mm. bits of information. Mm as as compared to millions of tr transactions that are happening in our heads and you know most people i i say that to say well you know at 40 at the most and and that's if we're on a hundred percent all day long wow and you know so it seems like minuscule like what control do we possibly have over our <laughs> right. lives you right. know and and some people can wage a good argument that not, not much. Some people yeah. will wage that argument, not much. Um, so, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that it's important to understand this because that 40, those 40 bits of information that we can pay attention to, even cut that in half to 25 or 20, cut that in half uh, to, 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 to 20. And it seems like nothing, but second per second, hour per hour, week per week, it's still something. Right. And maybe, maybe those bits of information that seem so minuscule compared to everything mm. that we are on autopilot, maybe that's where we should be paying attention because that's where we can make a difference. The other thing is that, mm. that, really that's the canvas of our lives. So that's kind of like what we have. Mm -hmm. We have 40 bits of information. If you cut it in half, 20, <laughs> it's, it's still a lot. And, and that's where within that there's almost, you know, I'm trying to look at this uh, scientifically, but at the same time, I could look at this almost sacredly and mm -hmm. say that those, those, small number of bits of information that we have control over that we can make decisions over are the canvas of our lives. And, mm. and, and, and that's what, that's how we are going to accomplish any purpose that we have mm. right there. I mean, if we're going to do it consciously, otherwise we have to, you know, agree to do it haphazardly. And I see how this actually fits into work. Um, so there's inattention blindness, which is that there's so much information and you only have this like 40 bit of information at best that you can, um, um, or you have change blindness where things are changing, or you, you described it in your book, dismiss information that we see as against our belief or our tribes. And so these are kinds of the things that are happening. And I and I think how I, I view that when, when I'm at work, where that comes into play is um, from a relationship standpoint, as you're saying, even not noticing when someone is doing something that's, that's actually right. important or on a task, you know, so there's the relationship and then there's the task at hand that you're doing at work, you know, forgetting 
you know, you know, a whole clause, you know, when you put it in a legal document, right? That's an example of just inattention because there's, you know, a legal document usually is lots and lots of information. So, um, and I see the change blindness as being perhaps like when you hear something, and this is what I've noticed at work. It's like, well, I have a good idea. I think X and someone's like, oh, X, we did X 10 years ago, never will work. And we did X, That's right. like, you know, <clears throat> nightmarish things occurred. And so we don't, we're, we just like automatically say no, because we have seen it before. We know exactly what's going to happen and it's not going to happen. So how do you, how do you, you know, have someone open their eyes and go, hello, that was 10 years ago, life has changed. Like how, how do you help someone get out of that change blindness? Well, I think, I, I think again, it, it's got to be, uh, uh, to me, the best tools that we have are reflection and to, and to reflect into the experience and see just how that worked out for me. Mm -hmm. You know, is it working anymore? You know, um, did it not work out? You know, sometimes, you know, we have, um, we have, a, you know, as a, we have an elephant in the living room, you know, mm -hmm. we don't even recognize it. We're so transfixed on what we want to do. Mm -hmm. We're so transfixed on our old, like you said, your old habit um, or, or whatever. Our, you know, here, here's my goal, and I'm so transfixed on that. I'm not seeing what's going on over here. In fact, right. I'm missing it entirely. Right. And, and we're, we're, we're built to do that. You know, right. we're, built, we're built to do that. And we're, you know, so we're kind of fighting against, you know, our tendency to neglect that and just right. go over here for what we want, you know? Yeah. And, and so I think that hmm. in our reflections, we can open up our lens. You know, I talk a mm -hmm. lot in the book about, um, about our attentional lens and mm -hmm. we can open up our lens and we can, we can say to ourselves, look, you know, the, the attentional lens doesn't always have to be. And in fact, usually shouldn't be, you know, all in one, all tight or all wide open, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it it's going to fluctuate. I mm -hmm. mean, even in a meditation, it's going to fluctuate, mm -hmm. um, whether you like it or not, it's gonna, right. It's going to, it's going to fluctuate. So, you know, we can, we can make ourselves aware of, you know, when we're in, uh, when, when we're reflecting on a situation, you mm -hmm. know, how, how narrow, was my actual, you know, I'll use the term vision, but let, let's mm. make that focus. How narrow was my, my focus on everything? And did it need to be narrow? What happens if I open it up? And in the reflection, there's no harm done. Open it up. See what's mm. going on. See what else is in the room. See what, you know, and, and, and it, may, it may have to translate into, you know, in, in a real life situation, it may have to translate into dialogue. So in a reflection, you may say, well, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm in this, you know, I'm, I, I'm in the middle of this task, I'm working with a group, this one person is acting um, the way he's acting. And it's, uh, it, it's, it's not supporting the goal that we're after. And, and, and now I'm anxious. And now I'm upset with this individual, I may have to open it up and, and, and even break an old habit. And maybe I find out that the individual uh, is, is undergoing some experiences in his mm. or her life, mm -hmm. you know, and again, ch mm. it's a change, a change blind, something that I, you know, and when the person tells me, oh, you know, well, you know, my, my partner, my, my partner is, you know, is, is suffering from, the, my partner has cancer. And, right. was, and was diagnosed with cancer during the pandemic. And this is what happened. And I've been undergoing this. I haven't told anybody. And then all of a sudden, you know, as a, as a team player, as, as part of that group, I look at this and I say, oh, that explains a lot. And then right. you start to think about it and you start to say, oh, that's why this was happening. That's why this was. And it all makes sense now. But when mm. we were looking at it, when we were looking at it sort of statically, 
we missed it entirely. Mm -hmm. If we can miss something as big as a building on the highway, we can miss these little idiosyncratic changes mm -hmm. in, a, in a person. Uh, and I, again, I'm just thinking about relationships here, but th this has come up in, in many lifetime experiences, mm -hmm. not just relationships. Yes, so these are relevant in the sense that this actually reflects if you do your pregame before changing these behaviors, it's like really microscopically look like, oh yeah, you know, I missed all these little details and changes. And now that I put on a different lens, now that I have like a wider scope, I can see that, you know, I was focusing on these 20 versus these, you know, other, you know, bajillion pieces of data that were out there. But also we can ask ourselves in that reflection when we're reflecting on the experience. So experiences that go awry, you know, like let's say you find out about something like that. Mm -hmm. let's, let, you, know, you know, if you reflect back on it, you can identify areas where you might have been able to have done something differently mm -hmm. that would have yielded a different result. Mm -hmm. and, and now, mm -hmm. now what we've done is we've made ourselves aware or pre-aware of not only what went awry, but what we might have been able to do differently. And so that the next time something like this comes up, we've got that awareness. We've got that, we've got those coordinates set up and, and hopefully we can act a little more like we want to act in a situation like that. Now, how about the miser brain and priming? How does that um, <laughs> affect our pre settings <laughs> well that's because you know in terms of the in terms of the of the miser brain uh you know we're we're you know our mind just our mind wants to our mind's a miser <laughs> it just <laughs> our mind wants to go to the, the the quickest simplest solution there is yeah and and that's it so if there's a quick easy fix we're going to go for it and that right. and that kind of goes in with the discussion we're having about your mind creating the mini experience mm -hmm. and in in milliseconds you know bringing this information into your attention system and then making a quick decision yeah. but it's, uh, it's going to go for the quickest fix right you've driven down this path before cj just go here boom right <laughs> it's a miser the miser brain which is the quickest path and how about priming well, if we go back, you know, with the miser brain, if we go back to that experience, you know, where you're in a, you're in a group work and, mm -hmm. and, and somebody's acting a little differently, your yes. brain is, you're very likely to just go right to the last way you acted when you were in a situation like this, disregarding the fact that something may have changed in that person's life and that person's day, that mm. might, you know, and we learn different ways of behaving mm. with people that mm -hmm. can kind of not only, um, not only give us a better fix uh, in that situation, but create a better bonding, a better, a better relationship with that individual. Mm. Because now we're, you know, our attention is forcing us to find different ways of communicating with that person. Mm -hmm. And then how about priming? What is that idea? Well, priming is, priming is, uh, is something I go into in the book and it can, it can get kind of, well, not kind of, it is, it is quite complicated. Um, but you know, one of the, one of the interesting things, um, about priming is, is things that are happening around us that affect the way in which we behave. Mm. And generally they're, they're very unconscious mm. to us. Um, so, you know, for example, uh, you know, if, if I go to teach a class and I, and I wear a sport jacket, like I have on now. And, and, uh, and in fact, one of, one of my instructors years ago did a thing like this. So I, I think that, again, I like the, the, the simpler stories. So I, I'll share this one with you. One of our instructors, um, did this to the class, to, to class I was taking years ago, um, when I was being trained, he came to class. He, he was a meticulous dresser. Mm -hmm. And then one day he came to class uh, with a pair of jeans that were, you know, back then when they were ripped up a little bit, they were in yeah. style. Right. <laughs> you know, they, they, they're making a comeback. But, <laughs> right. but back then, you know, so he came into class with a, we had never seen him in jeans. Mm. Came to class with ripped up jeans. He had a, he had a, a kind of a, a, 
a hip <laughs> shirt yeah. on yeah. and and he was messed up a little bit he hadn't yeah. shaven in a couple yeah. days and he was teaching the class and 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 about 3 quarters of the way through the class you know he said he said well you know what do you think <laughs> and everybody you know everybody was stung like did he yeah. do that he did this on purpose you know and and the thing was <laughs> We all had had thoughts, including right. including <laughs> yours truly. Right. You know, I had had I had had plenty of thoughts about what he was doing, and I was you know, and I couldn't decipher why. So I you know I came to other conclusions about him. You know, <laughs> and really, uh, you know, he taught us how quickly something like that can affect us. Mm. But you know, there's been all kinds of there's been all kinds of interesting testing done with words. You know, if, mm. if if I start using uh, words, for example, that are, are apropos uh, with with the elderly on younger people, mm -hmm. um, they'll likely uh, slow down in their activity. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll, they'll act slower. They'll talk slower. They'll move slower. Mm -hmm. If I start using, um, there was a really interesting piece of research done years ago, uh, decades ago. Uh, and, uh, uh, it, I, I loved it. It, it showed, um, it showed magazine pictures of vacations mm -hmm. that were in like tremendous places, you know, and, and you could, you could literally look at something like that and, and then, you know, a half hour later be walking around and your mood dips, mm -hmm. your mood dips into a lower mood because of where you might be living and and how you might be living and your inability to take a vacation like that right mm, now is wow. being af affected subconsciously so a lot of primes are happening subconsciously um th there's been all kinds of of great great testing and you know like if, if somebody's doing a public speaking uh presentation and walks in you know with a leather uh, a leather bag and uh you know uh, dressed up uh, is uh, quite formally, um, as opposed to the, my instructor so many years ago, you know, and, and, and delivers, a delivers a presentation. People will be preset on how to, how to respond to that. Um, as opposed to if the person just showed up, uh, looking casually and, and so on. Yeah, and that's interesting. So there's, I didn't understand that idea. So it's priming biases us and it works yes. off of our biases. Um, if you looked at a magazine, for example, that, that showed some really fantastic places, you know, um, you might, uh, you, you, you know, you might be taking a test a little while later and, and, and not do as well on that test because somehow that magazine, you know, jogged you into an area where you feel you, you can't take care of some of your own concerns. Mm. Like so there are ways in that, and so this segment is really just about all the different things that your, your brain is designed in a particular way, but as a result of your brain being designed in a particular way, you either do priming, which is kind of a shortcut, right? In terms of how, what information you retrieve, you're trying to like quickly discern and decide things. Um, miserly, inattention, chain blind. These are all ways in which your brain operates in, 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 in the interest of efficiency, um, but at the same time could shortchange um, us actually being fully aware of what's happening and acting yeah. in the very best interest at work. And again, reflection can help bring these things out. Mm -hmm. You know, who, who hasn't walked into a room before and felt just enlivened, even though they'd never been in such a room before, or walked into a room and felt like they're having the energy sucked right out of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a kind of a strange experience. And you just feel like, boy, there's th just something about this place that, mm. you know, doesn't feel right to me. But if in a reflection, you can identify what that is, you might mm -hmm. be able to identify that that's a prime and that's what happened. And, and as a result, this is what happened. So you can, you can, once again, you bring that into your awareness, you can start to regulate it. Mm, interesting. <laughs> I just love this information. We've been talking to um, Dr. Jo Joseph Cad Cordella about his book, The 12 Rules of Attention and How to Avoid Screw-Ups, Free Up Headspace, Do More and Be More at Work. Thank you so much. 